Hi there, welcome back again to the Ivory Tower Collections. In today's video, I'm going to show you the process where I install a UAV audio modification into this 7800. And if you aren't familiar, the UAV, I featured it once before in a uh, basic overview video of how I had installed it. But in this one, I thought I would go into more detail about the actual installation process itself. So for that, we'll need to discuss what tools we're going to need in order to accomplish the task. So that'll be the next part. So what items are we going to need or tools specifically will we need to do this job today? Well, for starters, we can't get anywhere without this. This is the UAV itself. And in case you're not familiar with the UAV, it stands for Ultimate Atari Video. And specifically, it is a replacement video encoder chip assembly that you can install in a multitude of different Atari systems to provide a better, higher quality composite as well as S-Video output. Got to have one of these first of all. I might also need some liquid solder flux for different connections just to make sure my solder stays in place where it needs to. I'm also going to need a good soldering iron. In this case, I've got my Hakko 907 with my 936 soldering station. I'm going to probably need some flush cutters and a multitude of different pliers. I usually have two different ones I use. I've got these I use. I have these littler nosed ones that I've got. So this is like a small, medium. And then I also have a slightly larger set of pliers that I also use. Most of the pliers get used for the audio video connections themselves when I attach them to the case. I've never really gone through the process of how I do that, and I might do that as a separate video, but I will not include it in the installation video on this. Other items I'm going to need, I'm of course going to need some wire strippers, and I'm going to need a number two Phillips so I can get inside the thing. So we'll get that uh, set up there. And then what else? I'm going to need some wires, some hookup wires. So there's any number of hookup wire I might use. Uh, I've got large strands of this 30 gauge Kynar speaker wire wrap that I use from time to time. And then I also have a multitude of other wire, uh, basically 28 gauge stranded. So I've got like a whole box that I've put together here over the years that I use. And that's pretty much about it for now. Uh, obviously, you're going to need audio video connectors for the job, but again, I will cover that separately and people are going to have their own way on how they want to connect up their audio video equipment or specifically the connections on their console. So there's no real right or wrong way to do that. It's totally preference. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and crack open the 7800 and uh, we'll get started. Here we're looking at the Atari 7800 mainboard, which I've already uh, disassembled and taken out of the rest of the console. And we're going to now go into the nitty gritty discussion of how to install the UAV into this bad boy. So there's some prep work to be done just to make things a little bit easier. First of all is to make sure that you have a set of instructions downloaded so that you know what needs to connect to what. Because there are quite a few wires and lines that have to connect off of the various resistor points off of the Luma and sync, sync locations off of the resistor ladder here that go onto the UAV board. And then you're also going to have to provide yourself with some ground and power. So the first thing to talk about here is to do some pre-planning. First discuss or think about where you want the UAV to go. Now most of the time I will install the UAV board in a horizontal fashion like this and I'll either attach it off of the top of the BIOS chip or off of one of these two RAM chips here. Either way it's okay. I just prefer that they be on one of these three because they do not tend to generate any real heat in the system when it's on. Whereas the, uh, the TIA, the Riot, and the uh, 6507 CPU and the Maria do get rather warm. So I would avoid installing it or placing it on any of those larger ICs, but keep it to something small. I will probably go ahead and use the BIOS chip in this case. That's usually my default location for where I install the UAV. But again, you could really place it wherever you want. But I try to keep my leads and the wiring connections as short as I can to prevent any additional interference from getting into the uh, signal. So the other thing you could do is now, in this particular installation, I will not be removing the RF modulator board. But a lot of people, they figure since they're going to go with a composite and S-video output connection like this, that they have no need for the RF modulator and will, in fact, remove it. And sure, you can do that if you want. 
With the RF modulator removed, the UAV will fit quite nicely in the spot where it used to be on the PCB, nice and flat. That's perfectly acceptable. I've actually got my own personal one installed that way. But in this particular install, uh, I'm, going to leave the, I'm going to leave the RF modulator in place and try to keep the unit as stock as much as possible. It's another thing I like about the UAV and also the Magic Knight S video kits is that there's no components that have to be removed. You're also going to see, now I do have a set of instructions, uh, a PDF that I will put a link to, uh, once again, for the UAV installation that I go through. The audio section in the PDF is kind of outdated uh, in that I basically state that I remove part of the connections of the audio input resistors and then I reroute them. And you can still do that, but if you do that, you will kill the audio to the RF modulator. So again, if you're wanting to use RF 100% still and keep that intact, then you're not going to want to go that method. Uh, the other thing is to discuss where you want to get your power and ground for the UAV. It does require 5 volts and ground to operate, and they're clearly marked on the pads up here. And there's any number of places, obviously, like any other classic console where you could retrieve this information. But here's where I tend to usually get it. I actually use these large rails right here on the top of the PCB to provide ground and 5 volts. This rail here provides you with ground. And this one here provides you with a 5 volt source. And you can see there's lots of unused vias as well. Additionally, on the opposite side, these are also 5 volt and ground rails that you could tap off of as well, if you wanted to. But I usually just use these. There's a lot more room, essentially, to work around. A lot more, uh, you know, it's just wherever, preference. But these are the ones I'm going to use. Now, these vias are not yet opened up. They're not completely cleaned out. They have some, from the solder wave that was used when it was originally built, there's some solder on the back side of the boards that I'll need to remove. So I'm going to do that uh, as well. But aside from that, it's really just, you know, plan out where you want it to go and think about how you want to route your power and ground so that you can go ahead and prepare that. You'll see that on those uh, rails that I talked about, I've gone ahead and removed the solder mask around my ground and 5 volt sources so that my solder will adhere to it much easier when I get to that point. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now, as part of the prep work for the audio side of things, there is no audio filtering on the UAV, so you have to come up with your own solution. And there's a couple of ways to do this. But what I normally do is I will take a 18K and an additional 6.8K or 6K8 resistor, and I will attach them to the bottom or south legs of the original R5 and R6 resistors, which are also 6.8 and 18K respectively. I will tie them together at the top and then I will solder the positive lead of a 10 microfarad, 16 volt or above voltage capacitor to the tops of those. And then I will usually, and then I'll leave the negative lead here off of the capacitor to use as an attachment for my audio out to the RCA jacks. Now I'm showing you this angle here first because the next time you see this, I'm actually going to have some shrink tubing on this in two separate parts. I'm going to have a small piece of shrink tubing here and some additional shrink tubing around this and the whole thing will be folded down flat on top of itself, on top of the original resistor locations to kind of keep it low profile and just make it all kind of look nice and tidy. So that'll be the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, heat shrink applied and uh, I'll show you what that looks like afterwards. I now have shrink wrap applied and on the components and I have folded them down fairly flat so that they don't take up as much room. I've left the negative lead and in completely intact off of my capacitor so that I have an attachment point for my out, audio output line back out to my RCA jacks. But again, you know, there's any number of ways you can do this. If you really wanted to, and another easier way is just to, like I said earlier, is just to lift up the north legs of R5 and R6, attach your capacitor off of the ends of those two legs, right out. I mean, you don't have to get all fancy like I've done here with the uh, shrink tubing and what have you, but you know, I just try to make things look neat. So as part of our requirements for attaching a UAV board to a 7800, there's a number of different wire lines that are going to have to come off the various uh, sync and luminosity sections from off of the graphics section. What I normally do will apply a solder first to the points along the resistor ladder that my wire attachments will, will come from. The only ones that you need to be worried about are essentially the first four right here, you skip this one here in the middle, and it's got a large fat trace that comes off of it, so it's real easy to see that comes between the, uh, the video buffer here and this uh, capacitor. And then the other three after it. 
And specifically these last two, so there's a total of seven connections, but these last two are your color input lines from the uh, Maria and the Tia, respectively, from the 2600 side and 7800 graphics side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of solder to the bases of each of these legs, just to uh, get that ready to go for me. Just like that. Now at this point of the installation, I have all of my wires in place that need to come off the resistor ladder to the various or input vias on the UAV itself up here. I've also gone ahead and temporarily got my UAV essentially attached. I've got my power and my ground wires ran to it off of the uh, rails that you see here. Had some issues with this ground wire being finicky, so it's not nearly as pretty as I would like, but it's gonna hold just fine. And if, again, you can attach the UAV pretty much wherever you want. I just choose to usually put it on top of the uh, 7800's BIOS chip. And uh, from here, what I need to do is to run the individual input wires off the video circuitry into the UAV board. You'll also notice that I've got some uh, connector standoffs here or some connector pins coming off of the output lines. You can really do whatever you want on this. You know, some people just solder the wires straight to it. I like to make things so that I can disconnect them in the future if I need to for future service work. So in this particular case, I've just got these uh, header pin connectors just soldered straight up into the uh, connector points. Now normally I'll also have to fold these down a little bit at a 90 degree angle for clearance purposes, but uh, for some reason this particular 7800 arrived to me without any RF shielding. So I actually have plenty of clearance to just put the connectors straight in. But yeah, again, you can do that however you want, but I just wanted to show you where I was at on this process. So from here, the next thing I'm gonna need to do is to run my individual wires, like I said, to the various input points on the UAV. Okay, I now have each of my input wires from the video circuitry area of the resistor ladder all connected up to the UAV board in their appropriate locations. What's left to do now is to make some temporary connections off these header pins I put in place just to test and make sure everything's okay before I button it up. And here we are with the completed project in place. So as you can see, uh, testing on this was successful and I've got all my wiring and such measured out where it needs to go and finalized. So I guess what I'll show you uh, after this is just some sample gameplay footage from this particular unit that shows you the UAV in action. Hopefully uh, this video was informative and uh, be sure to comment and uh, like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.
Yeah. <laughs>